Hi, welcome to my channel, The Magic of Math, where we master math one video at a time. Today, my lesson is on solving compound inequalities. We will graph and write compound inequalities, and we will solve compound inequalities. So as we begin, here's what I'd like you thinking about as I proceed through the lesson. How is graphing a compound inequality similar to graphing an inequality? And how is it different? Let's begin. So compound linear inequalities are inequalities formed by joining two inequalities. And they're either joined with the word and or with the word or. So we have and, and it would look like this, or it could look like this. We have an inequality that could stand alone, joined by and, and a second inequality. It could also, when it's an and, be written in this fashion. So think of it as right here, we have negative three less than or equal to x plus 12, and our second inequality is right here. x plus 12 is less than or equal to 13. So there are two inequalities that can be split into two inequalities that look like this. When you have an or, it will look like this. There's no way to write it a second way. It has to be two inequalities joined by the word or. So I have a standalone inequality or this inequality. Graphs of the and compound inequalities are an intersection of the graphs of the two inequalities. The graph represents the set of solutions that are true for both inequalities. So think about joining what the overlap is, and that is your solution set. So let's look at one. So I have a simple compound inequality. This is what your solutions will look like once you've solved a compound and inequality. So really this says x is greater than negative three and x is less than five. So remember when you reverse where the variable is, if you flip it to the other side, so right now it's on the right of the inequality symbol, if I flip it so that it's on the left, I must also flip the inequality symbol. And when it, there's no words and it's written like this, we know that the word is and. So let's think about graphing it. First, I'm gonna graph this inequality. So here's my two number lines. So we're gonna have an open circle on negative three because it's greater than but not equal to. And because it's greater than, my arrow is going to go to the right. The second inequality is going to have an open circle because it's not equal to on 5, and it's less than. So notice that these are all the values greater than, and here it's less than. So this intersection right here is our solution set. So you would not graph this compound inequality like this. I just did this to show you how you graph them individually. So if we're gonna graph this solution set, it's going to begin with an open circle at negative three, stop with an open circle at five, and we're gonna shade everything in between. So I'm going to take away, we can call this the intersection, that's another way to write it. So the intersection of these two solution sets, and this is the symbol for intersection in math. So right here, this graph shows the intersection of this solution set and this solution set. So we're gonna take away these graphs, okay? Because those aren't true for this compound inequality. They were true for individual inequalities. So when we look at the solution set for this and, this is what's gonna look like. So whenever you see or have a compound inequality with the word and, it's an intersection of the two solution sets. So it's not all the solutions of x is greater than negative three, or all the solutions of x that's less than five. It's the solutions that are true for both inequalities. Now let's talk about the graphs of the or compound inequalities. The graph of an or compound inequality is the union of the graphs of the two inequalities. The graph represents the sets of solutions that are true for either inequalities. So here, when you have an or, you always see the word or. We have the inequality x is less than or equal to negative one, or x is greater than two. So we're gonna put, combine, make a union of the two solution sets. So on our number line, the first thing I wanna do is put a solid or a closed circle on negative one because it can be equal to. So negative one, closed circle, and all the solutions less than. 
and then open circle because it's greater but not equal to. So our solution set for this one goes to the left and our solution set for that one goes to the right. And we can write this as the union. So there's no intersecting, there's no overlapping. So a true solution for this compound inequality is anything found from negative one less or greater than two. Either one of those is a solution to this compound inequality. So we could also replace the or with this symbol for union. All right, your turn. I would like you to write the sentence written in blue, a number x is greater than or equal to negative two and less than three. And then I would like you to graph the inequality that you write. Please pause and come back when you're ready. Welcome back. So our solution first is our number x, let's highlight, we have a number x greater than or equal to negative two is our first inequality. It's an and compound inequality, and our second is going to be a number x less than three. So we have a number x greater than or equal to negative two, and a number x less than three. So now when we go to graph it, we're going to graph a closed circle on negative two, or we could write it like this too. I forgot that part. So we can take the and out. We're flipping this, so we have to reverse the symbol. So because I'm moving the negative two to the left, I have to reverse the inequality symbol. Our x goes in the middle and our less than three. So be careful when you write it like this. And I always, as a general rule of thumb, the number on the far left is the number that's the least in value. Now let's graph. So we're gonna have a closed circle on negative two and shaded to the right because it's greater than or equal to Clo uh, open circle on three because it cannot be equal to it and everything less than. So our graph is the solutions of negative two all the way up until the value of three, the intersection of the two graphs. Your turn, let's try this one. I would like you to write the sentence below in blue as an inequality and graph it. A number X is fewer than negative four or no less than four. Please pause now and come back when you're ready. Welcome back. So we first wanna identify that we have our first inequality. It's a compound or inequality, and then a number X no less than four. So a number X fewer than four is going to be less than, is fewer than, is the same as saying less than negative four. We have our or, and then we have a number X no less than four. So it has to be greater than or equal to four. So it can be four, but it can't be less than four on this one. So when we go ahead, there's no other way to write this. We're going to graph. We're gonna graph an open circle on negative four because it's not equal to, and it's all the values less than that. Then we come over here, we're gonna have an open circle on four because it can be equal to four, and then all the solutions to the right. So we call this a union because nothing intersects. So it's all the solutions here or all the solutions here. If it falls in either, then it's true for this compound inequality. Now let's talk about solving an and compound inequality. So we're going to solve this and graph our solution. So the first thing I'm gonna do is recognize that this is an and and it can be split into two inequalities. So I have the negative five less than or equal to negative four x plus three is my first, and my second is gonna be negative four x plus three less than or equal to 11. Now I'm going to solve these separately. So the first thing I'm gonna do is isolate the variable term by doing the inverse of add three, which is to subtract three from both sides, leaving me negative eight, negative five and negative three or negative eight less than or equal to negative four x. Now I wanna isolate the x, so I'm going to do the inverse of multiply by negative four and divide both sides by negative four and flip my sign. I gotta reverse the direction of the sign because I'm dividing by a negative value. Negative eight divided by negative four is a positive two. I reverse the direction of my symbol and I have x. So now we're going to solve the second inequality. I'm gonna do the inverse of add three and that is to subtract three to both sides, leaving me negative four X and 11 minus three is eight. 
Now I'm going to divide both sides by the coefficient of negative 4, knowing that I'm dividing by negative value and I have to reverse the direction of the symbol. That leaves me x, flip my sign, greater than or equal to negative 2. Remembering that the way this is written, it's an and. So you could combine them like this. Negative 2, I always start with the less value. Negative 2, I'm flipping it, so I'm going to reverse the direction of the symbol, x. Again, I'm flipping this one too, so I'm reversing my symbol, 2. Or I could say x is greater than or equal to negative 2 and x is less than or equal to 2. So let's graph these. I'm going to graph this one first. I'm going to put a solid circle on negative 2. Oops, solid circle on 2 is first. And then a solid circle on negative 2 and shade everything in between. So it's a, a intersection. Now we're going to solve an OR inequality. So you can see I have one inequality, OR, and then a second inequality. So we're going to solve these two inequalities separately. So the first thing I'm going to do here is, remember, I'm writing 2 down. I'm going to do the inverse of add 2 and subtract 2 from each side, giving me 2x is less than negative 10. Divide both sides by 2. It's a positive, so I do not reverse the symbol. And I have x is less than negative 5. And then I'm going to come up and I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides, leaving me negative 3x is less than or equal to negative 6. Divide both sides by negative 3 and reverse the direction of my symbol because I'm dividing by a negative value. x greater than or equal to 2. Remembering that this is an OR, so I have to graph x is less than negative 5. Open circle, arrow to the left. Closed circle because it can be equal to and greater than that, shaded to the right. So this is a union. Anything in this solution set or in this solution set is a solution to the compound inequality. Your turn. I would like you to solve the compound inequality and graph your solution. Please pause and come back when you're done. Welcome back. Let's see how you did. So I'm going to solve the first and then the second. So I'm going to isolate the variable term by subtracting 4 from each side, leaving me 5x is less than or equal to negative 10. Divide both sides by 5. It's a positive value, so I will not reverse the symbol. And negative 10 divided by 5 is negative 2. Then I have my or, and let's go solve our second. I'm going to add 9 to each side giving me 2x is greater than 7. Divide both sides by 2. I do not need to reverse the symbol because I'm dividing by a positive. So x is greater than 3.5. Let's graph. So we're going to have a solid circle on negative 2 because it can be equal to and shaded to the left. An open circle on 3.5 because it cannot be equal to and then greater than, so shaded to the right. So again, this is a union because it's anything in this solution set or anything in this solution set is a solution to the compound inequality. Your turn. Go ahead and solve, graph, and come back to check your work. Welcome back. So the first thing I want to do is this is an and. So we're going to separate. We have negative 9 less than 3k plus 6 is my first inequality. My second inequality is going to be 3k minus 6 less than 9, separated by and. So let's solve our first. We're going to add 6 to each side, giving me 3k less than negative 3. Divide both sides by 3 for a solution of negative 1 less than k. Add 6 to both sides. 3k is less than 15. Divide both sides by 3 and k is less than 5. And remember, we could write k is greater than negative 1. I reversed where the k was. Instead of putting it on the right, I put it on the left, so I had to reverse my symbol. And k is less than 5. Or I could write it in this way. Negative 1 less than k less than 5. So let's go ahead and graph. We're going to have an open circle on negative 1. And it's all the solutions greater than that. And then an open circle on 5 because it cannot be equal to and all the solutions less than that. So this is an intersection. 
So the solutions that are true for this compound inequality are the set of values between the two open circles. And there you have it. That's how we solve compound inequalities. I thank you for joining me today. I hope it was helpful and that you will subscribe to my channel and sign up for notifications. Please join me again at The Magic of Math, where we will master math one video at a time. Have a great day.